watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ghostfire Media. I am your host, Adam Wood. Next to me is our co-host, Carl Henderson. How are you doing tonight, Carl? Hey, I'm great, man. Um, uh, really excited about this race. Um, uh, to be honest, hoping we're going to have a better race than we did last week uh, at USA International. It's a little messy, but I think here at this track, I think these, these guys are going to put on a show. Yeah, uh, the Fuel Racing League is going to be here tonight at Pocono, the Tricky Triangle. And they are going to try their best to get around this gigantic track without any mistakes. Um, you know, when we look at this track, I mean, a lot of these races come down to fuel mileage. It's a, such a large track. A lot of it has to do with drafting. Uh, three different corners all the way around the track. So, you know... It's going to be an interesting night to see how everybody takes to it. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. And I think fuel strategy to some degree is going to be a little bit easier here than a lot of times is. Um, you know, this is a 60-lap race tonight. We're looking at a fuel window of, you know, 32, 36 laps. You know, the draft might be able to extend it out a little bit, but there's no way you're hitting a full 60 laps. So you're definitely taking a pit stop, but if we stay green and, and, and the type of the timing of that pit stop can, you know, make or break your race. Yeah. I mean, uh, you start getting on one strategy and then next thing you know, a caution comes out of nowhere and just messes you up. And then you got to start quickly thinking, how is the rest of the race going to play out? Uh, tire strategy is king here too. Uh, tires really make a difference on these lap times, hooking the bottom, like the 55 of Norm Pellaird just uh he barely missed and that's kind of like key here because it's a huge momentum based track you got to be able to carry that speed off the corner yeah you know and i mean this is this is his outlap so not the hugest deal in the world uh, i don't think we have anybody on a time lap yet um but yeah i think you know you, you hit the nail on the head about the tires i mean you're, you're not going to come into the pits uh just to get tires um however <laughs> i love his uh, yeah. uh <laughs> um but um, you, you're not going to come in just for tires, but, you know, again, it comes back to the timing of the pit stop. You come in early, you potentially get an advantage over the guys uh, who come in later. However, you also have the chance of um, uh, getting caught out there when a caution comes out. So um, uh, his first lap is a 55-9-1. So we got quite a few. We've got 10 recorded laps right now. Tyler Hensley. He is going ahead and got the fastest lap with a 55.39. Let's see, we got. Well, well I, I, I'm not quite sure how because it says that he. Oh no, never mind. No, I, I do see that he had the full lap. So we only have one lap. That's interesting. He went out and laid a lap. Well, that's all they like, have. <laughs> they only have one lap up there, as you can see. Uh no, they they should have two laps according to this. They should have a. It's a 10 minute or two lap qualifying. Um. And, like, for example, like, I'm looking at uh, uh, Delonte Ballard just laid down his second lap. So, um, not quite sure why he stopped there. Uh, maybe he had some issues, or maybe he just thought his lap time was good. And let's see. Justin Morton comes across the line in sixth right now with a 55-63. Let's go look at Zach Edwards. Zach Edwards in that number 14, Exalta. Yeah, 
Yeah, current. Uh, actually, I think uh, he may have completed his laps already. Um, I think, uh, yeah, it's, it, at least on mine, it is showing that he is on, uh, uh, he's already completed two laps. All right, um, well, let's move on. So, with, uh, honestly, honestly, I'll tell you what, a lot of times when I'm out there um, and after I set my qualifying, I'll go out there and I'll keep running laps because it's like free practice at that point. Um, <laughs> no, no reason to go ahead and just park it. I, what, what I do is I normally go out there and I sit there and I try to make my fuel or pit entry, you know, I yeah. uh, get that one last little attempt to, to haul ass inside of it and uh, try to stop at your pit stop to kind of get, get refreshed with it. Yeah. You nailed it there. I, I absolutely do that as well. Um, and you know, I also know you can do it a couple times because you know, once you're stopping your box, it doesn't stop you. So go ahead and pull back out and do it again. Yeah. So we got, Shane, he's almost done with his first lap here. He's right around turn three here. I mean, you're trying to carry so much speed and that rear end just wants to break loose and you just have to kind of feather the throttle, uh, carry as much speed as you can across that finish line. So, so it, 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 here's a fun fact for you, Adam, about this track. And I don't know if you knew this, but most tracks have four turns and this one only has three. That's why they call it? the tricky triangle <laughs> um sorry i'm just making fun of some of the uh, fox and nbc broadcasters that uh love to bring it up uh, every moment um uh, but yeah so you know we got uh, alan elwood and tyler hensley and blake gordon sitting at the top of the board right now uh cameron hearn is out there doing uh his second lap right now i believe his first one may not have uh, set a time maybe he has some issues but Oh, Cameron Hearn moves up the fifth, so... Um, it looks like he is uh, done. He's pulling off. Yep, yep. I'm trying to see. we got Eric Wineland. Oh, yeah, Brandon Bernhardt's a good choice out there. Uh, Brandon's uh, done. Uh, Thomas Bressy, I think, is a good choice we could pop over to. Uh, he just set the sixth fastest time and is currently on his second lap. Uh, he did a 55.58 on his first lap um, in comparison to Ooh. the leaders. Ooh, well, he will not, he will not be getting <laughs> yes. a faster lap on his second one. Um, how about we kick over to Eric Wineland, um, who on his first lap just did uh, the ninth fastest time, um, a 55.62 compared to our leaders, 55.3 even. Um, but this is his second lap, so he'll have an opportunity to improve on it here. Yeah, he's got to hook this uh, turn two at the bottom. I, you got to time it just right to hit that yellow line. Uh, you know, whenever you go into it, it's important because if you don't hook it and you move up a little bit higher, you get slingshot into the outside wall, which he almost did. And uh, you, you have to give up so much momentum to lift so you don't hit that wall. So I love to either hook that line or just go just a little bit below it on my qual laps. It's not going to hurt it that much uh, since you're just qualling, but I, I, you know, you have to hit that yellow line, or if not, you're just going to be slingshot into the outside wall. Eric Wineland crosses the line there. We'll see if that was a faster lap. It was not. That was a no. 55.74 for him. So let's see. We get. Looks like most people who are wanting to qualify have been out there and qualified. Let's see. Well, we get Casey Shue and Brian Kidda, both uh, uh, options uh, for us to look at. Yeah, so we got Brian Kidda here. So, this is still his outlap, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, he is coming around. Uh, we'll be uh, taking his first time lap uh, after this next turn. I'm keeping an eye here on Casey Shue as well, seeing if uh, seeing what he can do with his lap time. And we also have Travis McQuistion, who's on the uh, uh, track. And John Doble. John Doble's out there. He just uh, yeah. pulled off the uh, pit road. So we got some guys setting laps. Um, you know, we'll uh, see what they can do here. Um, Casey Shue finishes his first lap, and he is currently scored 19th. Well, let's look at John Doe. Actually, Travis Smith question. Let's see what he's up there. Uh, I always loved this car. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the better looking cars out there. The moment I saw that one, I, it's it's really simple, um, you know, in terms of its design. Uh, you know, so I know, like, from a technical sense, like, you know, the difficulty in painting it, it might not be as hard as some of the 
the other ones, you know, obviously less complex, but I, I love this paint scheme and the variations on it. Yeah, I mean, people, I know I spend quite a few hours. Uh, ooh, he fish tails right there off the corner trying to get out of it. Yeah, and Brian Kidda just finished his first time lap, and he takes the 19th position. Casey Shue falls back to 20th. Uh, Casey Shue also finished his second lap, did not improve. I, I really think what we're seeing with these guys is that that first lap is, you know, for most guys, going to be the money lap, it looks like. Yeah, let's see where Travis lands. It did not score him. That's um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if maybe uh, he went off track or um, what. But I, uh, I, to me, it will be solved and it looked clean, so it must have been early. So let's look at Davey Hendricks and the wonderful Skittles. It's just weird. You got a Hendricks car or a guy named Hendricks driving a Toyota <laughs> Skittles or M&M. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm dumb as hell. <laughs> <laughs> M&M's. Yeah, I feel like he should be out there in an Exalta uh, car or, or something. something. Ally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> National um, Guard. Oh, and it looks like our time uh, is up. <laughs> that that went by really fast. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I was expecting that 10 minutes to last a while. So we have Alan Elwood is going to get the Elwood uh, Designs Fuel Pole Award for tonight. He is part of the Virtual Racing Alliance. So that is going to be awarded to him. So let's go sounds, down. The, it sounds like it's rigged. It sounds like it is totally rigged. Uh, let's go down the list here. So first, we got Alan Elwood. Second, we got Tyler Hensley. Third, we got Blake Gordon. Fourth, we got Randy Bichel. Fifth, we got Cameron Hearn. Sixth, we got Thomas Bressy the third. Seventh, we got Delonte Ballard. Eighth is Shane Theron. Ninth is Eric Wineland. And tenth is Justin Morton. In eleventh, we have Joe Dinsmore. Twelfth, we have Brandon Bernhardt. Thirteenth, Sean Carmody. I feel like I'm calling an AOLL race right now. Fourteenth, <laughs> uh, we have Jonathan Gerben. Fifteenth, uh, Boomer Logan. Sixteenth, Josh Laston. Seventeenth, Norm Pelletier. Eighteenth, Michael Stroll. Nineteenth, Brian Kidda. And rounding out our top 20, Casey Shue. 21st is Kyle Cooper. 22nd is Zach Edwards. 23rd is John Doble. 24th is Danny Ware. 25th is Hayden Pastoris. 26th is Travis McQuistian. 27th is Davey Hendricks. 28th is Gael Brooks. 29th is Chris Matthews. And 30th is Matthew Rodriguez. All right. And 31st, we have Cal Pilarski. 32nd, Tyler Dulger. 33rd, Nick Adams. Rounding out the field in 34th, Don Runkle Jr. All righty. Let's look at the race info of this wonderful track here. So right now the weather outside is 83 degrees here, but the track temp is 112 degrees out there. So it's hot and slick for these guys. Uh, the track length is about uh, two and a half miles. Like it says, who will conquer the tricky triangle and come out victorious tonight? Well, I, I can take some guesses at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alan Elwood's certainly got to be a favorite. Um, you know, good speed out of Tyler Hensley tonight. And look, our, our winner from last week, Blake Gordon. Um, you know, I think you and I know it more than many people who, who watch uh, or, or in the Fuel League, but We've seen Blake Gordon, uh, what he can do uh, for, for a couple of years now. And I, I, any race that I see Blake Gordon in, I won't ever count him out. Yeah, I mean, you got uh, Cameron Hearn. I mean, he, he's out there, too. We just had him on the podcast. Uh, this man's out there on the mission, too. That blippy car is fantastic. Uh, it's his son's favorite. That's why he drives it. So he's out there putting on a clinic with these guys. He's having a great season so far. Yeah, and again, also can't count out Thomas Bressy. I mean, this. I mean, look, I, I, I think you know. I feel like we're you know, highlighting some guys here, and I don't want to count out any of the other guys. You know, like Randy Bechtel up front and Delonte Ballard in seventh. I mean, the fields in this league are so strong that I really genuinely think anybody can win this um, if they can nail uh, uh, their uh, uh, strategy for the race. I, I genuinely think anyone can win this race. Uh, so I, I'm excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, and they're around in turn three right now. Pace car is about to pull off. Uh, first start, 
should be on green, which the green flag automatically comes out. Alan Elwood gets a heck of a junk coming out of it. Number 44, Tyler Hensley, is going door to door of Blake Gordon for second. He's trying to hold him off. Everybody's still stacked up two by two. The only person that's out there running single file right now is Alan Elwood as they dive into turn one. Yeah, Elwood got a heck of a jump there, but look out. Blake Gordon's coming up. He's going to go a little high there, but that may have been a little too uh, early as we see uh, Tyler Hensley uh, jump back inside take a position. Yeah, I mean, it's momentum. He's trying to get a good run off the corner, but uh, he had, I think he had a little uh, get off the throttle a little bit too much because he went too high there, which let Cameron Hearn get underneath him. Everybody's now fighting for fourth place right now. Yeah, and you know... Uh, Throughout the field right now, I'm seeing like lots of side-by-side -side racing. You know, further back, uh, uh, some places at times we've had three wide. Um, these guys are uh, they're going for it right now. As you see them coming off turn three, going across the stripe right there, you see them all fan out going on the front straight away here. I mean, everybody's trying to draft. Uh, nobody really wants to hang out there by themselves because this is a long, long front straight away. And if you sit there and get outside that draft, you will lose positions. They will freight train you, and you will go back. So you have to worry about that whenever you're coming off of turn three. Yeah, I honestly feel like this is a track where you have to worry about a lot. You're, and, and honestly, it's easy to lose like your mental focus. Um, you know, when I've run here, you know, you're on the straightaways. You're trying to figure out who you want to draft from, and and whether or not you want to break the draft with the guy behind you. And the next thing you know, you're having to hit the corner. And you know, some of these corners require some uh, uh, you know breaking in them. Um, especially, uh, uh, I think it's turn one, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't run here in a, a few months, but, uh, uh, yeah, turn, turn uh, one is very tricky because you're carrying yeah. all that extra speed. You practice, you know, if you don't practice and draft going down this front straight away, you get used to your braking zone and how to enter it properly. But as you can tell, you're coming into this corner with extra five, 10, maybe even 15 miles an hour than what you're used to if you're out there by yourself. And that's a heck of a difference whenever you come to break and going in turn one to get that car woe down and be able to rotate through the center of that corner. Well, and, you know, and again, this is also, you know, and I, I think if anyone's listened to one of my broadcasts before, I talked before about uh, uh, how difficult non-symmetrical tracks can be. And I mean, even symmetrical tracks, I mean, each corner is going to have its own little personality. But especially at these tracks where it's like, uh, you know, each corner you have to drive completely different. You know, you're, you're, you're driving down the straightaway, you get a lot of speed, you're, you're working through strategies and, and your fuel strategy and all of this, and talking to your team, and you hit a corner, and next thing you know, you're like, you know, having to figure out how you're going to take that corner. It's like, oh crap, I'm um, on turn it, three. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a tough track, um, uh, but it's a fun track, and I bet these guys are having a blast right now. Yeah, right now they're all single file. I mean, you're only jumping out of line right now is to pass somebody and you know i think a lot of people have kind of found their groove found their rhythm and figured out where they are at on the totem pole if they're faster than the person in front of them if they're slower if they're riding uh and i, I think most people are just going to be like hey i'm riding we're at lap four of 60. you know let, let's take it easy i'm going to find my rhythm i'm going to probably try to start like strategizing hey how can i ma maximize my fuel and my tires right now yeah, I was about to say that. I mean, you know, sure, they're all kind of comfortable right now. Uh, for the most part, we're single file throughout the field. But, um, you know, they're, we're going to start, you know, at some point start seeing some, um, you know, movers and shakers because there are going to be some guys out there that are pushing a little bit harder and some guys that are conserving a little bit. And I think those guys that are conserving a little bit uh, later in the run, they'll be able to gain some positions. Yeah, right now, you know, we're, we're trying to find the action on the track. I mean, like we said, everybody else, oh, there we go. Uh, number yeah. 85, he just jumps down Danny Ware uh, and gets inside of him and passes, gets two spots there in that corner. So that was Boomer yeah. Logan. Yep, yeah, Boomer Logan, the 85 car. Uh, uh, someone I, I've raced with quite a bit uh, uh, during the Fuel Sportsman Series. Uh, really solid driver, a lot of fun to drive against. Yeah, Davey Hendricks in that uh, M&M's car is right on his back bumper. So... Uh, Danny Ware's <laughs> got a whole entire mirror full of some M&Ms. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if it's uh, going to be one of those. Like, I guess it depends on how it turns out on track, but uh, I'm wondering if it's going to be like a subliminal messaging that he's going to want to buy some M&Ms uh, after this race. 
Yeah, the uh, 66 got loose there on the entry. That let Danny Ware get onto the inside of him, take him down the back straightaway. Uh, 28 of uh, Boomer Logan is going, or Davy Hendricks is going to follow him in. Got a push that's going to leave the 66 out to dry and on the high side right there going to turn one. He's losing plenty of spots there. I'll tell you what, entering that corner, it may have just been that camera angle, but I, I think we were very close to having an incident there. Um, uh, the 66 got pretty close there, uh, but was able to back it down uh, and avoid any uh, incidents. There's a lot of action going on right here in the about three quarters of the way back in the pack of uh, around fighting for the 20th spot here. I mean, there's a lot of them going around. So the, yeah. these, guys, these guys are not content to stay still back here. I think the you know, top 15, 20 looks like they're, you know, hey, I'm going to run single foul here. But these guys are stacking up. And, I mean, you can see uh, just a second ago, look at the breakaway right there. The nine car right there. Uh, Hayden Pastoris is pretty far back from the pack, and they're just even further back. So uh, we have two uh, two distinct packages here are breaking apart. Yeah, you know, and I, I, speaking of Hayden Pastorius, I want to talk about him for just a second because, you know, one of the things this league focuses on is uh, uh, the uh, Hard Charger Award. And right now, Hayden Pastorius is up eight positions. Uh, Davey Hendricks up seven positions. So right now, those are two guys battling it out for that uh, award. Yeah, that number nine is, it's moving up there, but now he's got to try and use that draft to get up to the 55 of uh, Norm. So he's trying to get up there. Uh, and catch the main field because if he can get by the 55, he can sniff the draft of uh, Josh Last in there. Ooh, the Ooh. Davey Hendricks gets steps out way out of line there coming out of turn three down the back or the front straight away. Yeah, not quite sure what happened there, if it was avoiding an incident or if he was just trying to break a draft or what. Uh, I mean, the sudden it was, it looked yeah. like he was trying to avoid an incident. Yeah, and somebody might have brushed the wall coming out the corner and you just, you know, Sometimes overreact because you don't know how violently that car is going to snap off the wall there. Uh, I ran into that incident almost last night. We had a driver on the last lap uh, was trying to help his teammate, so he pushed him really hard going into one and coming out of two. Uh, he couldn't hold onto the car and slap the outside wall. Well, I didn't know if he was going to slap it, if he was going to graze it, if he was just going to be able to hang on to it and miss it. So I, I drove drove down to the bottom to try and miss him. He slaps the outside wall and comes across my nose, which made my line the line I shouldn't have chose. But uh, I was luckily was able to break it enough uh, and uh, miss him. So you know, you know, in an instant, uh, you you could have a good race to a bad race. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, but. I'll tell you what, I, I'm keeping an eye on right now. I'm keeping an eye on Blake Gordon in that 13 car. Um, you know, I was talking earlier about, you know, comers and goers. Um, he, he fell back a little bit there. I think he dropped as low as uh, fourth at some point. Uh, but currently running third, he got back around Tyler uh, uh, Hensley. And I think this could be a situation where he may have been conserving a little bit. And we're going to have to see if he can run down these top two guys, of Alan Elwood and Cameron Hearn. Yeah, Cameron Hearn started fourth or fifth. Uh, fifth, sorry, he started fifth, and he, he's up three spots right now and chasing down the famous Alan Elwood. And uh, he's trying to get him. Uh, he's trying to use that draft to his advantage because that's the only thing that Alan doesn't have right now is the draft. So Alan wants to pull far enough away that uh, the draft is not a factor for these guys, but Cameron's not allowing them to get. He's only about six-tenths of a second out from him right now. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'll tell you what. I mean, the person the draft – uh, who isn't getting draft right now is, is Blake Gordon. Um, he's a second and a half behind. Um, lap time significantly slower than uh, the leaders, so um, he, he either is conserving or he just isn't as fast as these two guys uh, currently at this point in the race. Yeah, he's not getting the draft per se in front of him, but he's getting the push, the arrow push coming from behind that number sure. 44 of Tyler Hensley. Yeah, that, that definitely helps. It's not as dramatic as the draft in the front of you. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, definitely, definitely going to give him some more speed there. And we have a caution. Lap 10 of 60. There is a caution on the track. Sean Carmody. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, he just slaps that wall pretty hard. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to repair that car in time. He's going to go several laps down trying to get that car back up to speed. He's going to lose so much uh horsepower and uh, aerodynamics with that. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, that's one of the worst things about this track is uh, really any track that's fast like this, you you get damage in a league that doesn't have fast repairs. Um, you, know, you get damage at USA International. First of all, the damage is probably not going to be as bad. And you could probably also go out and drive with the damage. Yeah. Um, but here, you need to have all the aero advantage you can. And the horsepower. And the damage is going to be worse uh, just because of the speed. Yeah, you're going to need the horsepower and the aero here. The, this, this track is dependent on both. So, hey, while we're on our caution, let's see if we can bring up Alan. Hey, Alan, this is uh, Adam and Carl. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Hey, man, uh, congratulations on getting the uh, Elwood Pole Award for this week. Uh, we think it's rigged, uh, but it, hey, it's okay. <laughs> Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how's the car handling for you? Um, n not too bad. It's it's kind of pushy tight on entry, uh, but on exit it's pretty squirrely. So you got to really have an egg under your foot uh, in order to uh, get the exit right. But right now, um, I don't really have too many complaints. To be honest with you. I got you. Well, so far you've led all 11 laps by the click over to 12 as you cross the start finish line here. Uh, you have high hopes that you're going to finish off uh, in first, or is uh, Cameron Hearns going to cause you a little problems there? Oh, anytime Cameron's in a race with you, he's going to cause some issues as far as, like, you just, you know that you're going to be watching for him. Like, if you're ahead of him, he will get to your bumper at some point. So, you know, he's probably arguably the fastest guy out here. And, and uh, but being teammates, you know, we have respect for one another. And, and uh, you know, if it comes down to us at the end, we'll have a good, clean fight. Sounds good. Got anything from Carl? No, I think I'm good here, man. Uh, heck of a race so far from you, buddy. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. I love Pocono. Um, I didn't so much before the repave, but with this repave, it makes everything a lot more racy. Um, and I just really enjoy coming here, so I was really looking forward to tonight. All right, man. We'll, uh, we'll send you back down to your team. Good luck for the rest of the night, man. Thanks, guys. All righty. He's back with down on his team. So we got a couple of viewers out there. Who do you think has the best chance of winning and passing Alan Elwood here on this restart? Because this is where the most of the passes are going to happen tonight. They're going to be slicing and dicing. Well, I mean, I think if I were to pick someone to win right now, it's going to be Alan Elwood. I mean, he's, he's looked like he's uh, been peerless out there. Nobody's been able to compete with him. Um, Cameron Hearn's been able to keep up, but I mean, that's really it. I mean, he hasn't really been able to get up and in for a pass but if there's anyone i'm gonna pick to uh, be able to uh, uh beat alan elwood it, it would be cameron hearn uh, we've seen all season how strong he is and um i mean he's in position so cameron hearn would be my pick if anyone other than alan elwood's uh i mean you say that but how well is this outside line going to get a good jump uh will the inside line prevail and let blake gordon take the second spot here well we we gotta point out also though at least according to my timing and scoring uh alan elwood's not gonna be starting uh, uh from uh oh, first place position gael brooks uh, is yeah so that's gonna mess things up a little bit but I, I will say this i mean i think that um you know being teammates alan elwood cameron hearn um being teammates at the front especially especially they were controlling the restart not as much now but it, uh, it helps. Um, so I think uh, as long as uh, Cameron can get in there and, and tuck it in line, I mean, he's not likely to make a pass on this restart. Um, although having the inside line is definitely going to help him here. Um, but I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I guess he's on the inside here. There's really no need to tuck in. I think he's, he's in a good position here. Uh, much better uh, since Bayo Brooks stayed out. I mean, uh, Gael Brooks, I mean, he jumped up 27 positions by taking over this uh, first spot here, going to green. And, you know, maybe he's still thinking this is a one-stop race for him, that he's going to get out there and uh, just do one stop, where everybody else still has to do one stop as well from here. Nobody well, else I'll can go to what, the end. I'll tell you what, Cameron Hearn, the big thing for him is he's going to have to make this pass around Gael Brooks quickly. Um, you would expect that Gael Brooks is going to be slower, um, you know, due to the older tires. Um, Cameron Hearn, if he wants any chance to hang with Alan Elwood here, he cannot get hung behind a slower car right now. 
Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's the biggest thing is when you got somebody that stays out there, you have to get by them as quickly as possible on these old tires. And, and there, there will be opportunities. I mean, you know, when when they go green, the track's going to be pretty wide. I mean, if he can get a good jump, pace car peels off. We'll see what happens. When green flag drops, he starts to pull away. Alan Elwood is about one car length back. Cameron Hearn's going to drop underneath him. So he's going to take over that second spot. Guy Brooks going to go to the outside. Cameron Hearn's going to drop down to the bottom, trying to get the most momentum going through the corner with those four fresh set of tires. Guy Brooks are going to go for the momentum, though, on the complete outside. Alan Elwood's going to draft him off turn one, going on that little short shoot here. And there's a wrecking. Josh Laston's involved along with Davey Hendricks in that M&M's car. You saw it. Yeah, that's that. That was um, that was a rough wreck right there. Um, but you know, it's a cautions, precautions. All right, we see Davy Hendricks right here. Something's off with Joe Densmore. He was off. Uh, Josh Laston looked like he was trying to get out of the way. He saw something happening and drops down. And like I said, sometimes you drop down and it's just not the right spot. As you can see right there, well, uh, something's happening with right there with Joe Densmore as well. So let's. Kind of pay attention, kind of get a blimp view here. See how everybody stacks up right here. He gets into the side right there. Oh, yeah. That was just chain reaction right there. Right, let's see if we can get one more look since this is a long caution here. we got plenty of time to look, kind of look over this whole entire event. Let's go back a little bit more and kind of see what's going on. Oh, yeah, it looks like Joe Dinsmore maybe just got a little tight there on uh, uh, through the middle of the corner, and it looks like he came up a bit. Um, All right, at least so what kinda, it looked like to me. Let's look at, uh, look where um, Brandon's at. Let's go to him right quick. I guess we need to hop on Davy Hendricks. So Davy Hendricks hit Brandon Bernhardt just a little bit. So just a lot of checking up right there because of that incident. Unfortunate. David Hendricks was trying to make it some passes, trying to get back up to the field there. Yeah, you, you, you hate seeing that. Like, you know, uh, I, mean, I, I don't know if there's much that David Hendricks, Josh Lassen could have done there uh, to avoid that. Um, you know, when you, when you start having guys have issues up front, I mean, a lot of times it's just not time to react. I mean, that happened very quickly. Um, so, real bummer for them as we see Gael Brooks. He's coming in uh, uh, to pit. Uh, so, Cameron Hearn will take over our lead. Yeah, I mean, once you once you get in that position, you, like, dive down that low to get away from him, and then you see him, like, come back your way. There's not much you can do. Like, I mean, you're along for the ride. You can't sling left and then sling back right because when you sling left, you know there's nobody below you. You're not going to hit them, but when you sling back right, you, you know, you don't know what's going to happen when you're re-entering the field like that. Yeah, I mean, whenever you're trying to avoid a wreck, I mean, honestly, it's it's, it's guesswork to a degree. You're, 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 you, you've got to get committed quickly. You can't, you know, sit around and say, well, should I do this? Should I do that? I mean, you've got to make a decision. You make it quickly, and that's your decision. And um, sometimes it works out for you, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, and I mean, we we look at it, and Josh didn't look like he took that much of a hit. A little bit of aerodynamics. This pit crew probably going to be able to fix that one up, but uh, you no, know, Davy Hendricks probably not so much. Uh, he's going to be back there in the same boat with Sean Carmody. Yeah, and we see Sean Carmody's pitting again. I imagine did not get all of his repairs done uh, the first time around. So I mean, that's uh, a he's. That's a, that's a good part about this track. You, you know, we run a minute, about a minute, 37, minute, 40 caution laps here. So, I mean, you can get a lot of damage fixed on these pit roads uh, during these uh, caution flags. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, uh, that's probably the biggest benefit of the track you know, it, for, you know, cautions that you do get plenty of time to, to come in, you know, get some repairs and come back out, come again and get some more repairs. Um, you know, and still have plenty of time to catch the field for the uh, green flag. Yeah, and so we're right now we're still two to go. Maybe when we're coming out of 
uh, going across the line here will be go be one to go. It looks like everybody's trying a little like they're going to stack up. So we'll see if the pace car light goes off and see if we'll go one to go here. Looks like it. pace car lights are off. Um, so we will be one to go. Everybody's getting sorted out here. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm hopeful these guys are going to be able to get, you know, out here. Let's uh, get some green flag laps. Uh, once again, we had a nice long run at the beginning. Um, I think once these guys kind of get uh, comfortable, um, uh, you know, I think we'll be uh, we'll be all right here. Uh, I think I get through the restart first. It looks like Cameron Hearn's going to take the outside line here. You might be, you know, one of these teammate moves. Uh, get a good launch gives uh, Allen there a little bit of extra lead way there when it's uh, on that extra launch. So, you know. Yeah, that, that, that could be it. But I'll be honest. I mean, when I'm the lead. I can still get a jump over the guy on the inside, and then I can almost run my normal line up against the wall uh, uh, as you're entering the corner to drop down. So, uh, you know, as long as you are able to get the jump right now, if Alan times the jump, he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, you know, a lot of a lot of teams are going to help each other. I mean, this isn't you know with one or two laps to go, not a not a shootout. We still got a long ways to go here. I don't. I don't think there'll be too much mind games within the team here. I think it'll be teammate helping teammate here, tell them, "Hey, three, two, one, let's go." But we'll see. Uh, see if there are any mind games, and if he, Cameron stays silent and gets a huge jump compared to Allen. Yeah, sorry about that. If you said anything to me, I had some weird connection issues all of a sudden, uh, but it seems to have resolved itself. Yep. All right. Green flag is out. Cameron Hearn gets a good jump. Just about a car length ahead. Alan Elwood is going to really float up, take out the way from the 24. 24 drops down behind Elwood, gives him that second spot. Blake Gordon is going to dive in, trying to hang on to that third spot. Does not want to give it up to Thomas Bressy. He's going to try and stay with him coming out of turn one here, going down this long long little short it's actually a shorter shoot than longer shoot but it's a good enough for a heck of a draft yeah while all that was happening uh, on the restart something happened with nick adams uh not sure uh, what happened but he uh was able to uh, keep his car off the track and uh entered a uh, pit lane with uh, no issues uh thomas bressy looks like he's gonna pass alan elwood going into turn three here he does he clears them Blake has to stall just a little bit because of that. When he gets back in line, that killed his momentum coming off of turn three. He's going to stuff it in right behind the 22 of Eric Wineland. The, they're all spreading down that front straightaway yeah. to break the draft. I mean, you see him going there. Cameron Hearn was almost at the bottom of the track. Well, you know, you're talking about Thomas Bressy getting around Alan Elwood. I mean, that, it could be a couple things there we're seeing. It could be that Alan... Uh, uh, led so many laps that, that his car is just behaving differently uh, in the draft and, and not used to it. But the other thing could just be, you know, again, long green flag run, come in, you get tires, and then suddenly your car is uh, behaving differently and he just hasn't adapted to it yet. Um, we'll, we'll see if uh, uh, Allen will be able to work his way back up or if he's going to be stuck back in a third position for a little while. Yeah. I mean, I think most of these are his teammates. So, I mean, I... Like I said, we still got a long way to go. We got almost, we're about to cross the line, make it 20 laps of 60. So we got 40 laps to go. Still one more green flag pit stop to going on. And as you can see, look at them all jumbling down that front straightaway there by jockeying for position. Yeah, well, and also, like, as you mentioned, I mean, breaking the draft in some cases, I mean, this is honestly a, a lot like what you see happening at, at, at a uh, actual NASCAR event where, uh, you'll see the drivers spread out on those uh, straightaways like that. And, I mean, you also have the teammates there. The teammates will jump out of the draft to help the other teammate draft past the person behind them. So, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of ways you can reinvent this track when you have teammates to help you and work with you during this traffic. Yeah, no doubt. Um, there's all sorts of things. You, you, you Again, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about them. This track is, is, is you know, there, there's an element of skill involved in it, but there's also a, there's a huge mental aspect to it as well, um, which I think makes it different than, like, you know, 
a, a lot of the other big tracks in NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, there's some big moves right now being made right now. Matthew Rodriguez and Guile Brooks just got by Josh Lass and going through turn three. A lot of drafting. Uh, number 71, Guile Brooks. Uh, he fell like a rock. I mean, he was leading the race, and now he's way, way far back. Well, well, he, he did pit, um, so that's part of the reason why he dropped. Um, he actually may have gained some position since the restart. I don't have that uh, stat, but, um, yeah, I mean, he, 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 he led for, I guess, a half a lap uh, under green and, and then had to pit. Yeah. So we got some action right here. We got, a you know, the uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth place on back right there all stacked up. The top three are trying to pull out and drive away from the field. Uh, Eric Wineland is uh, the leader of the second pack. Blake Gordon's in fifth. Sixth is Randy Bachel. Seventh is Sean, uh, Shane Theron. Eighth is Michael Stroll. Ninth is Tyler Hensley. And tenth is Hayden Pastorius right now going through. Yeah, Hayden Pastorius now up 15 spots, but uh, Cal Filarski also up 15 spots. Uh, so we got some uh, movers in the field right now. Yeah, Travis Misquistian, he's up 13 spots right now. He's sitting in 13th, so he started 26th and made his way up to 13th. So these guys are fighting and trying to catch up to the, the front of the field here and trying to get as much spots before this next green flag pit stop. Yeah, and, you know, we're definitely going to have a green flag pit stop because, um, you know, they pitted at uh, lap 11. Not going to get them anywhere uh, close to the finish of the race. You know, we, we might be able to stretch out to lap 45 maybe 50 if the draft uh, helps enough uh but that's not going to get us to lap 60 uh you may think oh 10 laps it's not much but at this track 10 laps is huge yeah i mean anybody that pits here uh or you know next probably about five six laps they will be able to make it to the end so you know who knows what the pit stop strategy is uh, are they going to try to cut it in half on their last pit stop uh are they going to short pit or are they going to run that tank empty? Well, you know, I mean, you're right. Fuel window is going to open soon. But a couple of things about that. Number one, you're taking some risks because caution comes out. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think, I'm not sure. You probably won't go a lap down here uh, pitting under green. Um, it'll be close because it is such a long pit road. Um, but um, the other thing to consider is that you pit now, and then we have, you know, or in a few laps, and then green, we have green white checkers. You might be in trouble, and you know, we've seen that happen. Oh, whoa, there's some trouble further back in the field. Yeah, there's a car no. against a wall. No That's... caution, though. Uh, they they kept it clean through there, which is uh, <laughs> pretty surprising. Uh, I thought for sure we were gonna have a wreck there. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Oh, I've already passed him. Yeah, the 57 to Matthew Rodriguez. Let's go down there. I'm trying. Oh, he, he, <laughs> hold on. Um, he was completely sideways. I do not know how he saved that. Um, this is them going into turn three right here. He just drives in too deep into this corner. Or actually, no, that's turn two. Yeah, but wait, wait for it. <laughs> I guarantee you this is about to blow your mind. Um, I, I've never seen a wreck like this get saved with no caution. He drove up on the wall, and, oh, man. <laughs> he just continued. I mean, he, he's doing the right thing. He's trying to hold it towards that wall, let everybody get by, and not create a bigger accident than what had already transpired. As you can man, see, I, I, David I, I, Hendricks I, I, and uh, Sean Carmody back there, down on power and arrow. You, you nailed it there, man. I've got to call that out because that the natural reaction when you have an incident like that is, oh, I've got to get off this wall. Um, and that can end up causing big issues for guys around you. He held it up there. So I, I, props to him. That that That's that's the smart move there. It's the right move. Caused a little more damage to his car, but it, it, it kept uh, us from having a much bigger incident. Yeah, good thing it didn't net code him back into the traffic. It, it like held him to the wall there, and he kept, I don't know how much more steering input he put himself into the wall. But, uh, you know, like you said, you, you turn the wheel just a little bit to the left, and sometimes in that type of scenario, 
the car goes violently left uh, out of nowhere. Uh, and that would have caused a bigger incident as you saw all those cars around him. Yeah, the, these cars aren't quite as bad as... Uh, so, like, for instance, the ARCA cars, they're they're non, very, very much non-symmetrical. And if you, like, you know, just tag the wall over your back end or something, suddenly you're just, like, sucked up into the wall. And, and getting off the wall is really difficult. These cars aren't quite uh, as bad about that. You can brush the wall a little bit and pull down, but it's really easy to overreact. I, I've been in that situation before. Um, uh, so, yeah, just, again, just props to him for that. That was a uh, uh, heads-up uh, move right there. Yeah, right now, we got a battle right now. Hayden Pistorius and Justin Morton. Justin Morton took it. Joe Densmore right there is coming into play. Uh, this is a battle for 10th, 11th, and 12th. So Joe Densmore bounces back from that earlier contact we saw in the last caution. So uh, he's back up uh, to 12th. So a good little rebound for him so far. Hayden Pastoria, yeah, so Hayden. he's up to 14 spots. Yeah, Hayden Pastoria's up 14. Um, uh, we got a few guys like uh, Travis McQuistian up 12, Kyle Brooks up 12, um, Kyle Filarski up 12, Tyler Dolger up 12. So lots of up 12s out there. But, you know, we were talking about fuel earlier. We, we are solidly within the fuel window, I believe. Um, you know, maybe not for a green white checkered, uh, although, you know, if, if we get in a situation where there's a green white checker, cautions are going to come out. So you can conserve fuel. You might be able to make it at this point. I mean, if it, um, I think if a green white checker comes out, I mean, most likely you're going to you're going to want to come in and pit anyways. Get those four fresh tires. I mean, you can go to the back of the pack, but and in two laps here on four fresh tires, when everybody else, if they don't pit, you're going to pick up lots of spots. That's a good point. Um, so I, I think we are going to we're going to see someone take the gamble at some point. Um, considering we have had some really good, clean racing. You know, I, I, if I'm a driver out there, I'm thinking the likelihood of staying green is relatively high. Um, and, but I think if you see people start pitting, I think it has to be a team. Um, if individuals start pitting, that's not going to be great because they're going to be, you know, sure they'll have a really fast car, but they'll have no one to draft off of. So I, I think at some point we're going to see a team pull, a tr pull the trigger here and uh, come in together. And right now... We're watching this battle unfold right now. Uh, Hayden Pistorius trying to get right, get his position back from Justin Morton. Justin Morton took it from him about a couple laps ago. He's been riding comfortably behind him. He said, nope, I want to get in front, so he take over. He's back solidly in the top 10. Justin Morton's right now sitting in 11th, and currently Joe Densmore's right there looking in in 12th. Yeah, that's one of the closest battles uh, uh, throughout the field right now. Um, those guys... Uh, Really, right there, uh, nose to tail. Um, it's been really fun to watch the past few laps. Oh, we got a good battle right here with Don Runkle Jr. and Josh Last, and they're coming off of turn one here. I, he got underneath them right there, just couldn't get the momentum. When you start getting older tires here, that middle to high lane starts to take over in turn one. You won't, you know, these uh, older tires won't let you hook as much at the bottom there to get that great run off of it. And uh, whoever takes that middle to high line, they're able to keep the momentum up longer for that, uh, that that good little long stretch there between turn one and two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, trying to see who we got through the field here. Um, uh, other than that battle between uh, Hayden Pistorius, Justin Morton, Joe Dinsmore. Um, we got Zach Edwards. He's trying to he, he used a little bit of yeah, draft coming uh, out of turn three. The 55 of Norm, he's got some rear end damage right now uh, from it. So, I mean, his right rear is all jacked up. Uh, spoilers up in there just a little bit. So, he's kind of off the pace right now. The 66 of Bron Keita in front of him. He's got a little fun and damage from another earlier accident. So, I think, uh, you know, Zach Edwards is going to start slowly moving forward. Uh, so, uh, some of these cars are lightly damaged. As you can see in the front of Bron Keita's car right there, just... Got a little bit too much damage for him to really keep pace, especially by himself. If he was strapping off somebody, you know, it wouldn't be as bad, but him being in that clean air just is not helping him. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking here. Um, uh, Blake Gordon right now uh, trying to take away uh, that fourth place position from Eric Weinman. Um, they've been kind of side by side here for a little bit, uh, um, and Blake's been working him. Um, 
And uh, we'll see here. You know, he's not in the preferred uh, position right now, but with older tires, who knows? That might work out for him. Yeah, turn two is hard to run too wide, especially on older tires. Uh, I mean, you got to trust the guy on the inside is not going to slingshot because that, that turn, you just carry so much momentum that wants to snap you to the outside. So having two people run too wide there is pretty dangerous, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, and I mean, additionally, you've got, um, uh, you know, Eric Wineland, you know, was having to run uh, off of his line due to having someone on his outside, you know, potentially a line that he was familiar with. So uh, good thing it worked out. But, I mean, Blake, Blake Gordon's still fighting here. Uh, I just don't think he's going to make it work here. Might actually lose another position here to 38 of Shane Therian. Yeah, right now, uh, Eric Wineland's working pretty good right there. Shane looked like he dropped out of line to give him a little bit of boost, but couldn't clear Blake, so he kind of stuffed it right back behind Blake so he, he wouldn't get freight trained by Michael Stroll because I, I know Michael Stroll, and he will not sit patiently waiting for these guys to kind of help each other out. He's going he's gonna to take advantage of them. Yeah, I mean, Stroll's a good, clean driver, but he, he's you're right. He's not going to just sit there and wait, um, especially, again, you know, when field's spreading out, if you've got speed, you got to go if you want any chance of uh, gaining any more positions. You can't just keep losing time to everyone. Yeah, I mean, you know, i, I got to commend these teammates working together. You know, Eric Wineland and Shane, they're both teammates. And as Blake was trying to get by them, uh, Shane was at, back there giving them the boost that he needed going into turn one to clear Blake. So, I mean, I, I like the way they're working right now together, even though they're not nose to tail. They're, they're very close to each other, so they're able to do, do some teamwork like that. Yeah, and I mean, I do think, uh, maybe not right at this moment, but at least earlier, you know, Blake Gordon was faster uh, than Eric Wineland, um, but uh, you know, may have, may have uh, gotten his tires a little overheated trying to make a pass, but oh, oh, this is going to be a pass here. I think Eric might attack the wall. Yeah, I think he just got a little loose there coming off the corner, and Blake had a heck of a run come out of the, uh, the turn two and was able to do that. Eric Wineland's going to be the first one on pit road. Yeah, first one out of our top ten anyways. And, yeah, that's um I, you know, I actually I, I wonder if that is if that was one of those things, well, you know, I lost a position and went pit, or, or maybe he thought he took damage uh, hitting the wall there, or if it was planned, but definitely he, he came down in a hurry. And he's by himself, uh, and that's the worst part right there. None of his teammates came in, so he's not gonna have a drafting partner coming out of this pit road, so I mean, that's unfortunately, it's going to drop him down a little bit by at least one to two or about a second a lap here. Well, the only thing that might work in his favor is that the field is a little spread out. Uh, so he, he might be able to find drafting partners here and there. Uh, they're going to be slower than him, but he may be able to kind of leapfrog them and just uh, keep building that up. But certainly not the ideal situation for him right now. Exactly. Unless he get a teammate or two to jump in this lap, he's going to be kind of stranded for a while. And nobody else jumps in. He's the lone wolf right now. Matthew Rodriguez is in, but uh, he's he was far too far back to make any type of help for him. Yeah, I think Matthew Matthew Rodriguez has been in the pits now for about a minute and a half. I think he's bearing damage. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of damage he needs yeah. to feel. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Eric Wineland right now. He is out there by himself. There is, I'm, I'm on the blimp view. I can't see anyone around him right now. Look, look at the leader of Cameron Hearn. He was able to pull away from his teammates. Almost a second away from him right now. They were been running real close to each other for almost since this green flag dropped on that la from that last caution. But Cameron Hearn is trying to step it out, trying to distance himself. So when they do come in the, the pits, he has a heck of a distance in case he misses it. And yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've got to be thinking, you know, if you're one of those guys behind uh, uh, Cameron Hearn right now, I'd, especially if you're not his teammate, I'd be considering pitting. I mean, it's clear that he has the pace to win this race. If you want to beat him, uh, sure, you can just kind of sit and hope for him to make a mistake. But I say flip the strategy and try to do something different uh, uh, to try to beat him out here. Yeah, we got uh, the 24 right now. Thomas Bressy's got Sean Carmody in front of him to kind of draft off down this uh, this uh, uh, short shoot between one and two here. And uh, trying to see if he can close the gap, but it looks like Cameron Hearn still, he's got a 1.1 second lead right now over him. And he's extended it even further, so he's up to 1.2. I 
Uh, Cameron's found some extra speed, and uh, he's not sharing it with the rest of his teammates. <laughs> Uh, Cameron Hearn right now, um, despite the fact that he is not drafting off of anyone, um, is laying down the fastest laps on the track, um, with the exception of Eric Wineland. Um, but I'll tell you what, here's a difference of some lap times for you. Cameron Hearn, our leader's lap time, last lap, was 57.11. Eric Wineland, who just put it a couple laps ago, his last lap was 55.58. Um, so about a second and a half there difference. Um could make a big difference uh, in the long run. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get that instant speed uh, boost here that's going to kind of give him that jump ahead. But once these guys do pit, especially Cameron Hearn up here, who's now got a 1.4 second lead over everybody, uh, it's going to be a lot different. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, it's, I still don't think this is going to work out for Eric Wineland just because of the fact that he has no one out there to draft with. But. Uh, you know, sure, if, 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 if he gets ahead of some of these guys and then they come in and pit and uh, they have more speed, then they still got to get around him on the track, whereas he gained the positions just by, you know, pitting earlier. So, um, you know, again, I, I, for him at least, I don't think this is a race-winning strategy, but uh, it could I, still gain him some position. Yeah, it, he might have just smacked the wall enough where he knew that he was going to just start to get beat there so he decided to come in i clicked on delante ballard because he's the next one that was kind of up there near the front uh to see where he comes out uh, afterwards i know he's gonna be probably a little bit further back than eric wineland yeah, he's about uh 10 seconds back from him I'm trying to see if he would come out near him to give him extra booth oh he gets a little loose there. there's cold <laughs> fresh tires there trying to give you're trying to get everything it's worth right now but kind of turn two there he got a little loose he was able to catch it yeah, you know, you said that he's... And Caution is on caution. the track. That is one of the guys who just pitted. Kyle Cooper was involved. And that is something. It's, uh, Eric Wineland is on the lead lap, but Delonte Ballard, who just pitted, is not. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll tell you what. I mean, you, you got to think that Eric Wineland, you know, who was trying his strategy, has to be furious right now um, because... And you wanted to see I mean, a thing, you know, pit cycle. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, sure, he could possibly stay out, but, you know, these guys are, are going to be on pressure tires than him, have no chance of catching them, so I feel like he might have to consider coming in again. Um, it, it's going to be a tough call for him here. Yeah, and it looks like uh, in the 73 right there, he was just trying to get everything she had. He clipped underneath that yellow line in turn two. It just upset it and let the, sent the rear around. Yeah, and that'll happen with fresh tires. You've been out there, you've ran, you know, 30 laps or so uh, uh, on those older tires. You start learning how they feel, and, and, they, and they transition smoothly into that. It wasn't like it was, oh, all of a sudden my car's driving way different. Well, when you pit and you get fresh tires, suddenly your car is driving way different. Um, so you, you get accustomed to one way, and then the next time you go out, it's driving completely different. It's really easy to have happen. Yeah, exactly. They, these guys, uh, you know, like you said, they, they get accustomed to their braking points, their let off points, their throttle points on older tires as they, as they wear. And then whenever you get these fresh tires, they act and react way differently to anything that you put at it. So, you know, we're going to see a lot of differences here when we go back green to see if, uh, you know, people have their 20, 20 lap old tires plus here uh, versus these fresh tires, see what they can do. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I hate that the caution came out because I was really uh, excited to see how that strategy was going to play out. And this sort of simplifies things, right? I mean, yeah. everyone's just coming in the pit. Um, and uh, Eric Wineland did not come in the pit. Uh, he's cycling up to our lead. Um, he was laying down some blistering laps um, uh, just before the caution came out. But I, I feel like this isn't going to work out too well for him. I think he is uh, a sitting duck. He's going to lose some positions in a hurry, absolutely. That's a great shot of the pit road here. I like it. Yeah, yeah that was <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, but we see Cameron Hearn won the battle off pit road, uh, followed by Alan Elwood, Thomas Bressy, and Blake Gordon. So along with Eric Wineland, who stayed out, that'll be our top five uh, when we go uh, restart racing. Yeah, so we got... Uh, Shane Theron, Michael Stroll, Randy Bachel, uh, Tyler Hensley, and Hayden Pastoris. They're your top 10 here tonight. So right now, 
the biggest mover of the race looks to be both Hayden Pastoris and Tyler Dugler. Tyler Dugler, he is back there in 17th spot and at number 88. Yeah, you know, he's at 15 spots. Uh, so is Hayden Pistorius, and, and we've got um, uh, Don Runkle Jr. up 13. So I, I always love, even even prior to calling this league, I've always loved calling out the guys who've moved through the field because, to tell you the truth, I mean, it's it's great you can go out and, you know, lead the race. I mean, those guys are certainly talented and, and good at what they do, but I enjoy seeing guys that are making a lot of passes. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, up 15 spots, I'm sure they had to pass a whole lot of cars to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, when you got 34 drivers out here tonight, I mean, uh, to move up 15 spots, I mean, that's almost half the entire field you had to go through. So, I mean, that's a lot of spots you got to make up. And that's just as of now. Who knows how, if he's fell back, you know, went forward, got even further than that and had to go back. So, you know, it, it takes a toll from you. You go up a little bit, go back a little bit, go up a little bit. You know, it's uh, one of those things. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but, you know, 20 laps to go here. Um, I, I, If we stay green, this could become a battle of, you know, first of all, you know, if, if the leader, you know, uh, possibly Eric Weinland or maybe Cameron Hearn, you know, with being fresh tires, but if the leader can pull out, get a good-sized gap, you know, and, and pull away from the draft, they might be in really good shape, but... Other than that, I think you might see some strategies play out. This is just long enough where a little bit of tire conservation uh, could do a lot of good. Um, so we'll we'll see if anybody you know is, is hey. maybe falling back a little early on and then able to gain it back later. I wonder what's happening here. I mean, we got Cameron Hearn. He's about two car lengths back from him. We're rounding uh, turn two here, and uh, you know we're trying to don't want to stack up to the field because once you got around turn three here. I mean, we go green almost instant as soon as that pace car comes in, and that slinky effect is really detrimental. Uh, yeah, to try to it, close it's, it. it's a little bizarre. Cameron Hearn in second place holding back a little bit. He is pulling in a little bit now, but, I mean, Thomas bressy has got a huge gap there uh, on the second row between him and uh, uh, Eric Weinland, so I'm um, not sure what's going on there. It's, it's easy for the 24 to close that gap, but, you know, everybody behind him that tries to close it, that's a slinky effect, and that causes problems throughout the whole entire field. And there he is. He's closing it up now and tightening up. And green flag is out. Pace car is in. Eric Weinland gets a great jump on the field. Tom, uh, Cameron is going to fill the gap in second. But Alan Elwood is going to take the bottom away from Thomas Bressy. Thomas Bressy is going to have to fight him going into turn one here. Yeah, I mean, that that, that was about as good as, as it could have worked out for Eric Weinland. I mean, I, I mean, I genuinely do not think he's going to be able to hold off uh cameron hearn here uh guys insanely fast all night and is on fresh tires right now but what eric has to do at this point is try to minimize the damage you know get out to a decent lead you know cameron hearn may take it from him but maybe he might still be able to get a top five out of this man they were sideways coming off the corner i think that was shane that was really sideways they were pushing like crazy uh, going in turn two, got sideways coming off, stacked up the field just a little bit, but no, everybody was able to regroup it. Didn't uh, great save. Blake had to back off, and he dropped a position. He's back to six. That's the farthest he's been, but all night long. Yeah, you know we've seen this with Blake Gordon a few times tonight, though. You know, kind of uh, uh, giving up a little bit early in a run and then regaining it. Uh, but I mean, he, he's not really had competitive pace all night. I mean. That's probably unfair. I mean, he's been competitive, but he, he's a competitive he's for top not, five. He, yeah, he, he's he's a top five uh, car tonight, I think. But he is certainly not, you know, seeing like maybe some kind of leader pace out of him tonight. Yeah, right now, you know, everybody's trying to get single file, uh, but we're coming down. We got 18 laps to go. Uh, we're going to start to get start to get a little bit more impatient. There's going to be uh, less give and a little bit more take as we, the race goes on from this point on. Yeah, you know, we see Cameron Hearn getting ready to make a move here on Eric Weinland. Uh, looks like he does have the nose in there. Um, I think, you know, Eric's going to lose it here. But, again, his objective, in my opinion, is not to try to win this race. It's to try to minimize the damage, which he's done well so far, I think. Yeah, maybe he's hoping for, you know, run five, ten laps, get another caution. 
uh, and minimize the damage up until that point and everybody come back and get four fresh tires at that point. I mean, that's all, that's what you can hope for right now. I mean, that's, you know, that'd be the best blessing he could get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, another caution comes out, uh, you know, once we've had a few more laps on these tires and look, this whole thing's changed. Um, you know, it kind of forces some of these guys to come in and get tires. Um, but, uh, he, he is losing some spots now. Uh, it's going to get harder and harder as he has to uh, actually fight off people. It's going to slow him down even more, and more people will be able to take Ooh, advantage. Oh, his teammate gets into him. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that was just a little uh, friendly bump. No, nothing to see. That was here. a heck of a save by him because I mean, you you're almost hooked right there coming off a of turn three on that front straightaway, and uh, on the older tires, uh, great save by him. And look, I know Eric Wyman's just running his race right now, but it has to be driving the guys behind him crazy because Cameron Hearn's pulling off to a uh, half-second lead uh, in front of Eric Wyman now. Um, it's making it more difficult for these guys back here to, to really be able to compete. We got a Blake Cameron Gordon Hearn. making a dive right there on Shane going into turn two. Can he make it stick? Uh, Shane's got the drafting help right there for his teammates in front of him. Blake is kind of out there on his own whenever he's making these moves. Uh, he does not have anybody to work with the draft right now, so I think that's kind of working against him here. Nobody's working with him, and Virtual Racing Alliance is all up front. Yeah, I mean, they, the Virtual Racing Alliance dominating this race with, with as many positions they have in the top 10 right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, again, this isn't like a Daytona or a Talladega or anything like that, but uh, teamwork does matter here. We got uh, Michael Shore right now getting on the inside of Hayden Pastoris right now for uh, seventh place. But it looks like yeah. Tyler Hensley's going to give him the, the push going down this little short shoot. Yeah, Stroll didn't qualify great. Uh, I think he qualified 18th, but um, uh, has been pretty consistently moving through the field throughout the entire race uh, up to eight. So uh, see if he can keep picking them off. We got Tyler Hensley. He's trying to make it back up there. He was up there for the first part of the race, but now he's kind of falling back as the race progressed and he's trying to get back up there right now. He's sitting in 10th spot and he's going to be in not the preferred spot right now, going on the front straightaway on the inside line. Uh, luckily, the number four of Casey Shue dropped down to give him a little bit of drafting help so he wouldn't get too far off the pace there. Yeah, and, you know, as, as all that's been happening, uh, Thomas Bressy and Alan Elwood were able to get around uh, Eric Wineland, so uh, they're on the chase right now. They're uh, chasing the rabbit in front of them, and uh, you know, based on what we've seen throughout the race, they're, they're not going to be able to catch him. But hey, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, see if they've got anything left in the tank. My question is how uh, how is Shane going to get around uh, Eric Wineland? Will Eric kind of let him go because they has Blake Gordon on his tail? Will or will Eric make him work for it here? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it it's always it's, it's never an easy answer to that because you know if I'm Eric Weinman, I know that I am holding people up. However, um, I also am trying to run my race as well. I'm not trying to uh, uh, do anybody any favors, whether that's teammates uh, or not. Um, and you know, he does. Uh, uh, Shane Therian does get around him there, um, and uh, Pete Gordon's not able to get make the move as well. So, uh, you know. Probably a good scenario for them right there. I, I mean, honestly, I, I was going to see if Blake was going to push Eric down the front straight away, leave Shane behind, and try to clear uh, Eric in turn one using them as a pick, but that did not work. And now Blake is under attack by Hayden. Yeah, Blake, Blake's um, uh, looking like he might be in trouble right now because if Hayden Pistorius keeps uh, uh, you know, side by side with him, I, I think you might see Michael Stroll drop down as well. Yeah, because uh, coming out of this corner, uh, Eric's going to take the wall. If everybody gets behind uh, Shane, they could have everybody drove by Eric going in the corner here, but everybody stays in line on the outside groove, and uh, Shane's going to start falling back now. Yeah, that, that was that. Blake Gordon got a little lucky there. Yeah. Um, but uh, the story right now, again, has to be I mean, I, I can't, I'm blown away by Cameron Hearn. Um, Almost a one-second lead right now over Thomas Bressy. Um, you know, still consistently laying down faster laps. Um, 
what what a show he has put on tonight. Um, you know, I, I, I honestly wasn't sure after his qualifying effort that he'd be a contender, but he's 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 shown it to me. He's 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 the contender for tonight. Yeah, that's the reason why I had we had him on the podcast last week. You know, he's shown us that it, he's got it, and he's already got one win for the season. So uh, he's going. He might come home with a second win. We got uh, eleven laps to go. As they crossed the line right there. So, so we still got, you know, a half a fuel run or a half a run going left uh, on this 20-lap shootout. Yeah, 11 laps here is like an eternity. A uh, whole lot of things can change. Um, and, and, again, of course, if, if a caution comes out, that changes everything. I mean, who, who knows what will happen if a caution comes out. And that's what Eric Wineland wants. Eric's like, hey, I'm still sitting in sixth. If we get a caution, I am still in the game. Please let somebody do something. Hook the corner wrong. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and again, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not wishing for it, but a caution would be really interesting. I think you would see some guys uh, try to stay out. And if you had a significant number of guys stay out, that could cause some major trouble for the guys who come in for tires. Um, so yeah. lots of strategies that could play out in this theoretical scenario. But if we stay green, I, I, I mean, I'm looking at lap times. I mean, once again, Cameron Hearn just continuing to pull away. 1.1 second ahead of second place. I, I I think this is his race to lose at this point unless something weird happens. And we got Alan Elwood just trailing Thomas Bressy sitting there in third. And, uh, so it's a one car lead, two car pack, another two car pack, and then a whole bunch of a pack. So these guys, uh, you know, we're all stretched out. Everybody's trying to make that move whenever they can. But I mean, you gotta have a friendly face behind you if you kind of stick your nose out. Because if not, you're gonna get freight train, as we've seen all night long so far. Yeah, I mean, we absolutely have. I mean, you, you know, it's already so difficult to pass here. But if you've got uh, uh, if you're, the person you're trying to pass has help, like there, there isn't a whole. It's gonna be very difficult to get around. It. Yeah, I mean, you have to either hope they either have to make a mistake coming off one of the corners. Or you just have to have, roll through the center corner way better than anybody else and get a great launch and keep up that momentum to be able to pass them uh, going down to the next corner. Well, we are at nine to go. Um, I, I am trying to uh, uh, look through the field here, see if we've got, um, you know, er Eric Wineland is, uh, you know, now dropping like a rock. <laughs> Uh, he is uh, falling back really hard right now, uh, back to 11th. Um, and, I mean, I think we'll continue to see him fall here. Uh, not, a, not a whole lot he can do to, to stop it at this point. Uh, his lap times are significantly slower than the people around him. Yeah, and they're just going to continue to fall off as his tires wear, whereas everybody else has a good, like, eight laps of newer tires. So, you know, it's got a while before everybody else is going to be at the level where he's at. Well, and I think also, I mean, it's probably amplified by the fact that, you know, he was up there trying to hold on to every position he could. Um, so he was probably pushing that car harder than, you know, a lot of these other guys have and probably burned through his tires even faster. I'm trying to see wh where's the good battle. I think here's a good with the Eric Wineland and Joe Densmore. Joe Densmore is trying to catch him. Joe Densmore is sitting in 13th. Eric Wineland's dropped back to 12th now. Uh... Casey Shoes right on the back heels of Joe Densmore. So if Joe can't get by him, I think Casey Shoes is going to try to get by him. Yeah, this is this is one of those uh, scenarios I have happen all too often where I, I'm trying to pass someone. It's like, all right, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait for them to make a mistake, yeah, find my opportunity. But then someone pops up it's like, oh, hello, hello, I'm, I'm back here as well. Uh, and then you have to make the move. Oh, as we see Joe go to make that move uh, and try to get around because he was feeling the pressure. And, and the worst part about it, though, is if you if Joe would have made his move and couldn't clear him, that you know he loses all that momentum. And he stalls out. And that leaves the room for Casey Shoe. Instead of you gaining a position, you lose a position. So uh, you know it's just one of those unfortunate things uh, that you have to kind of keep in mind whenever you're making these passes. Yeah, you know the benefit there is the tire differential, so you have some confidence that you'll be able to get around them. But uh, yeah, man, I mean it's something I've experienced a lot. You know, you, you try. 
you know, a lot of times you're behind someone, especially like, you know, on a, on a short track, and it's like, well, should I try to go to the outside? And it's like, uh, if I try to go to the outside, I'm just opening the door for the guy on the inside. So you ride around the line and try to just defend the inside, but um, not not a whole lot of uh, uh, defending right now for our leader. Um, as we are at six to go, um, uh, Cameron Hearn now up 1.3 seconds, just continues to pull away. Um, Thomas Bressy did actually finally have a faster lap uh, than Cameron Hearn, um, uh, but uh, it's, I think it's too little too late at this point. Yeah, I mean, unless uh, Thomas finds something, we're on board right now with Thomas Bressy as, that, as he looks on uh, for Cameron Hearn up there in front of him. So that's the distance that, you know, Thomas Bressy is seeing right now that he's got to close this gap and in the next almost five laps we're at six to go but we'll be at five to go coming to the line here we're coming off of turn three well i will tell you what that gap is shrinking in a hurry um i just said when i started that it was like 1.3 seconds we're under a second now for that gap um i'm not sure if i'm moving a look at lap times here yeah cameron hearn ran a, a significantly slower lap might just be trying to pace himself so that uh you know he's not burning his stuff up uh might have had some issues as well uh, maybe his... Oh, caution's out! Caution is out! Casey Shoe is showing. Let's see. Oh, oh Eric... Okay. Eric Weinland and Casey Shoe uh, got into it. Let's go back and see exactly yeah. what happened here. Uh, this uh, There's something that has to transpire before this. Uh, yeah, I would think. Uh, can, can we actually? Yes, yeah, uh, if we can actually switch the blimp view, it might give us a. I don't think we. I think I like this one, the chopper. Yeah, works. that works. That's great. So it looks like something come off. I think a Casey Shoe gets a good run here off of turn three to try and pass him. I think they got into each other. So he. he oh yeah. So, I, I mean, right there, we're looking pretty clean at that point. Uh, Casey Shoe. Oh, Casey came up a little bit. Um, and then, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know if it's, uh, they got, <laughs> they got net coded into each other and kind of pushed off or if that was, uh, you know, yeah. they got sucked into each other because of it as they were going on the back straight away there. They were just running so close. Their cars sucked into each other and yeah, bounced each other. That's it. That's, That's a tough one to figure out. I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's very clear that Casey Shue came up more than Eric Weinland came down, but I mean, it just comes down to, I mean, let's try, let's try like the uh, chase view. Uh, another one, rear chase. Uh, where's that chase? That that is one of the weirdest incidents I've seen. That is just, I, I'm I'm not sure why. I mean, K Casey Shu should have been able to see there uh, that Eric, you know, he was slightly behind. Um, should should have been able to see that you know that position was taken. Um, but uh, apparently didn't. Um, so you know, uh, there's your issue. But hey, we got leaders coming in the pit right now. And we have one person staying out. Oh, that's not good for him. Looks like we might have two people staying out. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I This blows my mind that more guys did not stay out. Um, How, I mean, you you, know, you're on 27 old lap tires. You're going to have green-white checker. I mean, only if you were probably between 25th on. I mean, that's just throwing up a Hail Mary at that point. But then, you know, if something goes wrong, I mean, it, you're to blame. So it's kind of like, do, that's I, a good <laughs> I do, but, but, do you put yourself in that position and, be, you know, for something to happen or and gamble it? So. I, but I, I would have. I mean, I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, a, a, a lot of the races I run in are small fields. So that sort of thing, you know, the staying out never works out. You know, like if you're in a 13-car field, if you and half the field stay out, well, that's still only five cars. So 
the leaders with fresh tires, you know, the guys with fresh tires, be able to get back up to the field really quickly. But here, I mean, you know, if half the field has stayed out, the leaders ain't going to make that up. Um, so, I, I don't know. I think a lot of that, when I see things like that, when guys come in the pit and that kind of scenario, like when they're at the back of the field, um, uh, it almost feels like giving up sometimes. Um, but I, I get it. I mean, because you, you don't want to be the last guy in that pack, uh, because then you would end up losing a lot of stuff. So, so right now we have Justin Morton, who stayed out. He's in first. Delonte Ballard came in. His pit road's time was 2.28 seconds, so he took extra fuel, it looks like. And that's basically all you can really do for that. Um, well, you said Delonte Ballard. Delonte Ballard has not, did not pit that time. I assume. Um, he, pit, he pitted at lap 39, according to mine. Okay, yes, he did. That was his, yeah, third, time, uh, his third time in during that time. I'm yeah, looking yeah. at everybody else. Um, and, and so, but uh, Shane Therian, I, I believe, took right sides only. Um, which is oftentimes in, in iRacing pretty treacherous because um, the car can get a little out of balance when you do that. But, uh, look, I think when Justin Morton decided to stay out, he probably expected, like I was saying earlier, more guys to stay out because uh, him and Delonte Ballard are not in a good position right now, I don't think. No, I mean, you have to throw it out there and try to figure it out, like you said, but... You know, you need at least a 10-car buffer between you and the four tires to make this work. And uh, it's just you two. I mean, unless you can be the biggest roadblock ever, uh, it, it's going to be very hard for these guys to be able to keep up. Yeah, I think the only thing they got going for them is Shane Therian there in uh, third position with two tires. Again, I don't know how two tires is going to behave at the track. If it's like a lot of other tracks I've been at, the cars going to be very unbalanced. And uh, he, he might have some issues. If he has some sort of issues that it, you know somehow slows the guys uh, with four tires down but doesn't bring out a caution, I, I've always it could felt, work out. I've always felt two tires with these Xfinity cars make it run, run like they're on ice. So look for him on turn one entry because, I mean, that's his gonna, going to be his first indication of what it's like to be with two cut tires on it. And look for him to go sideways or try to try to catch a slide because... That's how I feel whenever I ch I went and put two tires on the car. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of what I was expecting as well. And, you know, if, if that happens, you know, let's say he goes in turn one, he rides up a little bit and hits Shane Fury, and let's say Cameron Hearn gets caught up in it a little bit, and Bressy, like, I mean, all of a sudden, it's like, well, these two guys up front, they might have something going for them. All right, green flag's out. Justin Morton gets a heck of a jump right there over the whole entire field. Cameron Hearn is all over the back bumper of Delonte Ballard, trying to push him in the corner. And uh, he was trying to clear uh, Shane right there. I guarantee it to try to drop down going into turn one. But Shane got a heck of a push by Thomas Bressy, and that did not happen. And there goes Delonte Ballard. His car moved all the way to the top, could not hang, and he's going to be high and dry right now. Yeah, not, not a whole lot he could do after uh, the corner entry. And just, you know, uh, yeah, I think... Uh... We're seeing it now. Justin Morton's about to uh, get uh, passed in a hurry as well um, by uh, Shane Therian in 38. Cameron Hearn is coming on like a man on a mission though right now, trying to figure out where to go, who to push at what time to get the run. He pushed him going in the corner right there. I think he's going to try to back off that he had a good run out of turn three. But Thomas Bressy was able to get underneath him right there, get him off his line. Yeah, that, that's what, if Shane Therian wants to have a chance at winning this thing, uh, as White Black comes out, he's going to need Bressy and Cameron Hearn to battle, but that looks like that's not going to happen. Well, Thomas Bressy is going to push him going into turn one to stall out uh, Cameron Hearn so he will not get a good entry into it and clear him. Uh, Thomas Bressy is trying to force the issue to make Shane Theron a roadblock for him, but Shane uh, has issues there. His car goes a little sideways going into turn one, and it stalls them out. Cameron Hearn checks out from the field right now, diving into the turn two. Yeah, I, I think uh, unless he messes up here in, in turn three. Oh, we got uh, a Cameron, Thomas oh. Bressy in the wall. We have an accident. We're going to follow the leader, though, see if he was able to clear going in turn three. Huge accident, though. Cameron Hearn sideways coming out of turn three. Thomas, uh... Alan Elwood right now is racing Shane for second place, and he clears him coming out of turn three. Cameron Hearn will win, and Alan Elwood will take second spot from Shane Theron coming out of turn three. 
yeah, I'm, I'm trying to take a look, see what happened here with Bressy. Um, if Blake Gordon was involved. Um, Let's see if I can get an aerial view here. That's before Blake even got oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, Bressy hit the wall, and then yeah, just... uh, uh, Blake finished him off. I mean, Blake's on his run right there. Blake's rear end was sideways as well coming off that yeah. corner. I mean, Blake and, and, Blake was getting everything in. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and yeah then, I, was, I was hoping we'd get to see that. Uh, yeah, Blake, Blake was trying to avoid the accident there and went down, but uh, Bressy went down as well. I mean, that's just that's how it goes sometimes. But um, kind of kind of wild that Bressy finished uh, this 30, uh, 31st after having such a great run all night. All right, let's watch the leader burn it down. Well, while we're doing that, uh, why don't we uh, go through our results? Alrighty. All right, so our winner tonight is Cameron Hearn. As you can see, I'm burning it down. Second is Alan Elwood. Third is Sharon, Shane Theron. Fourth is Blake Gordon. Fourth is Hayden Pastoris. Fifth or sixth is Michael Stroll. Seventh is Randy Bachel. Uh, eighth is Justin Morton. Ninth is Tyler Hensley. Rounding out the top ten is Travis McQuistion. All right. In 11th, Joe Dinsmore. 12th, Kyle Brooks. 13th, Christopher Matthews. 14th, Danny Ware. 15th, Tyler Dolger. 16th, Delonte Ballard. 17th, Boomer Logan. 18th, Don Runkle Jr. Uh, 19th, Jonathan Gervin. And in 20th, Norm Pelletier. 21st, we have Eric Wineland. 22nd, we have David or Davy Hendricks. 23rd is John Doble. 24th is Cal Calvin Falarski. 25th is Bron Keita. 26th is Josh Laston. 27th is Zach Edwards. 28th is Brandon Bernhardt. 29th is Kyle Cooper. And 30th is Casey Shu. All right. In 31st, we have Thomas Bressy. 32nd, Sean Carmody. 33rd, Matthew Rodriguez. And in 34th, Nick Adams. And that's going to be it for tonight for the results. Let's go together and try to get the race winner here of Cameron Hurd. Let's see. Drop down here. Let's pull him into the booth. Hey, Cameron. This is Adam and Carl in the booth, man. How do you copy? I got you, man. I got you. Congratulations, man. Uh, you put on a heck of a battle all night long. Uh, you were able to gap the field at some points, and then, but you had to battle hard there uh, to get by some uh, cars on the older tires to get the win. How does it feel? Man, it, it feels good. A lot of fast guys out there. That last restart was crazy. Um, I was kind of you know, on the outside on turn one, uh, but we kind of made it work. So just all around, it was a good good race. Not a lot of cautions, but, you know, had an exciting finish at the end. I got you, man. Uh, go ahead, Carl. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask you, you know, we saw before that final caution came out, um, you know, you, you had uh, racked up a huge lead. You were like uh, 1.3 seconds ahead of, um, I think it was Bressy that you were ahead of. Um, and, and then, uh, all of a sudden, like in one lap, he started narrowing, uh, that gap significantly, like, uh, to under a second just before the caution came out. Um, I was wondering, was that a scenario that you were kind of trying to pace yourself and make sure you were serving your equipment and not making a mistake or had he potentially found something? I, uh, I stopped shifting coming on the front stretch. I got real loose one time. And uh, shifting here really gets you some fast lap times, but as the tires where you get real loose. And I kind of thought to myself that to save a little bit in the tank for the last two or three laps. So I stopped shifting coming off turn three on the front stretch. And that kind of was a little bit. Then I, I noticed the gap too. So I immediately started shifting again. I gotcha. So whenever uh, before that, I think one of the bigger cautions came out right where you guys are probably going to do a fuel run, uh, fuel stop there, green flag for your first one of the night. Uh, you started putting on a clinic. You guys were running one, two, three for the longest period of time. But uh, did you find something there? Because you, you pulled out to about a second and a half lead there and uh, broke the draft away from them so that they could not use it against you. So, I mean, uh, what, what was your thoughts there whenever you saw the caution? Did you want to go green the whole entire way, do a green flag pit stop? 
Oh yeah, I was I was hoping for a, a green. Um, the only the tunnel turn, uh, if you're behind somebody, it really causes the nose to push, and as a long the, the run goes on, it kind of gets that worse and worse. So I feel like being out front in clean air is huge, but definitely in that turn, I think Allen. I know Allen had some contact on tunnel turns that probably hampered him a little bit. And I think Bressy maybe touched the wall too. I don't think he hit as hard as Allen did. Um, that kind of helped me out, but definitely clean air. Um, you saw at the beginning with, with Allen up front. Once he got up front, he kind of stayed up there. Yeah. You yeah guys... so, oh, go ahead. So, sorry, Adam. We're, yeah. uh, we're still <laughs> working through this uh, between the two of us. Uh, we don't broadcast together a ton. Um, but I, what I wanted to ask here is, um, you know, you, you, you know, we talked you know, about how, kept pulling away like you were so fast i mean where do you think you were uh, uh better than than you know the rest of the field and the other leaders uh what what, what was giving you that ability to pull away like that um i think it goes back to the tunnel turn here you usually have people have strengths and weaknesses usually somebody's good in turn one won't be good in turn three but i felt like the tunnel turn is where i kind of gained my ground and then Bressy was really good coming off of turn one he'd get really good runs and i believe alan was really good in turn three so it's kind of being you know, picking and choosing the corners. But if he can carry some speed through the tunnel turn, it's pretty much the back stretch. That's where I think he can make up the most ground. I got you. Yeah, man, you you put on a heck of a clinic for him tonight. Uh, you know, like you said, Allen was up front whenever he got clean air. He was running great, and then he kind of fell back whenever uh, you were able to get by him there. And then, uh, I mean, you, you guys were working together all all throughout tonight. I mean, we saw not just the top three, but the rest of your teammates, you know, further back in the pack, you know, they were all working together with each other, uh, no matter where they were at. Uh, so, I mean, I commend you guys uh, for being able to do that. You know, when you saw your teammates or you're having little struggles, you drop down to, you know, let them draft off of you. So you got, you guys were working well together. So keep it up, man. No, I appreciate it. That's one thing, you know, you try to do is, you know, like, like you said, on the front stretch, in that long uh, stretch of road, like it really is, you can pull somebody. So if your teammates battling somebody on the inside, you can kind of help them pull them along. So that's what we, we try to do all night. I got you, man. Well, uh, congratulations. Let's see if you can bring this uh, momentum to next week and uh, see if you get another victory and be up here in the booth with us. I appreciate it. I look, I look forward to doing that. Sounds good, man. Well, have a good night. I appreciate you guys too. All right. Now that was our uh, race winner, Cameron Hearn. Let's see if we can get Alan Elwood. We've talked to him earlier in the race. I uh, did not get the win, but he did come in second. So let's see if we can bring him up. All righty. Hey, Alan, this is uh, Carl and Adam in the booth. You got a copy? I got you guys. Hey, man, congratulations. You got home second. You had a hell of a battle there coming out of turn three to get the pass, running door-to-door -door with them, going down that front stretch. Uh, what was going on through your mind whenever you went through the tunnel turn and saw your teammate just smack the wall and uh, almost took you out there? Yeah, I um, I mean, in the end, it's, it's teammates. And like I said with Cameron earlier, um, you know, whatever happened between Shane and I was going to happen. I, I wouldn't hold it against him. We were racing hard. Um, I tried the strategy of hopefully when we all took tires there at the very end, uh, I didn't take fuel. So it actually tightened my car up. Uh, and that really didn't, that didn't really didn't help me all that much. <laughs> so <laughs> I wish I had taken fuel knowing the situation, what was going to happen. But of course you don't know that until it happens. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't worried about Shane. I know it's going to be hard racing. I think whatever happened there at the end coming out of the tunnel was hard racing. Um, you know, just it's product of a green white checker, to be honest with you. I got you, man. So, that... so one, one thing we saw um, earlier, um, or, or you know, right at the last uh, caution there, is, uh, you know, you had two guys that stayed out. Um, and Shane, he took right side tires. Um did did was there any were you surprised that um, you know, more people didn't stay out or try different strategies? And was that something you considered as well, or was it always going to be a four tire stop for you? Oh, we considered it. We talked about it. Um, I thought that more people would take that response, um, considering you know, like we Delonte ended up staying out, and you know, honestly, like those guys up front kind of held their own. Um, so I think if more people would have stayed out, 
you know, who knows what the outcome would have been. But when you're you only got two guys that are staying out and you've got one guy on two tires, it makes it really difficult for those guys to stand any chance, um, even running a perfect two laps. So I think more people probably should have tried it considering how the race was going and where some people were in the field. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Everybody was probably afraid of taking no tires and just one of those four fresh good years to try and battle it out at the end. Yeah, having, I think you'd probably need at least four rows in front of them, uh, the leaders there uh, you know, with the four fresh tires to make, you know, the the leaders basically non-existent for this uh, last two laps. So, you know, you have, a, you know, close to eight cars in front of them, maybe 10. Uh, so the leaders won't be able to slice and dice their way uh, through the field to get back out there to make you, you have a fighting chance against everybody else on older tires. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, when it comes down to it, um, you have to also think about points. Like if you're wanting to gain points, sometimes you got to take that risk uh, in order to try and, and move yourself up some positions. And, you know, it is a risk. So there could be some negative stuff involved with it. But, you know, I'm not going to complain. Hey, I'll take a second. Um, I wish that I could have battled Cameron. I just had a little bit too much damage uh, racing the 24 there uh, early in the race to, to try and make any gains. But all in all, um, it's a solid night and we'll, and we'll take it. I guess, yeah, I mean, it, it's always good whenever, you know, you have your teammate win and then, uh, you know, you're battling with all all your teammates basically all night long up front. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's always a good night for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll take that team points wise also, and and uh, get ready for the next race. It, it, tonight was tonight was fun. I gotcha. Got anything else for him, Carl? I'm, I'm good here, man. Uh, heck of a run tonight, Alan. Uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, let's bring up our third place of Shane. He had a heck of a run there. Uh, at the end, uh, made it exciting there. Hey, it's uh, Shane and Adam. You got a copy? I got you. Carl and Adam. All right. it was, yeah. <laughs> Shane, <laughs> Shane, 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 Carl and Adam. There we go. To, to be I'm, fair, it is Shane and Adam as well. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Zoning out. It's almost the end of the broadcast. Uh, man, uh, congratulations, man. You had a heck of a fight on your hand there at the end. Uh, what was your thought process uh, there on the last uh, green-white checker? Uh, I really just wanted to get in front of the 11 and the 21 and hope they held up, you know, Cam and Allen. But, uh, you know, my two tires were there for it didn't, didn't really work out. But, I mean, I'll take a third. It's one spot better than when I came into the pit. So I'll, I will take it my first top, top five of the season. Gotcha, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, a lot of times with the uh, – Two tire stops. Um, you'll uh, car will be a little unbalanced. Um, how, how did the car feel when you uh, came out there on two tires? It was actually fine. I mean, the left sides weren't wearing as much. Like when I pit there, it was only down six percent on the left side. So I was like, all right, we'll give it a chance, <laughs> and it it felt fine. It got a little little loose off of two, and I was pushing it. But other than that, it was. I think if I would have restarted in the lead, I probably could have held them off, or at least. Made it a last lap pass. I would have gotten past the last lap. Who knows? But yeah, it wasn't bad. So, what could you have done differently on that last lap to hold Allen off? I don't know. Uh, Bressy sent me into the tunnel turn, so I didn't really get to get on the gas as soon as Allen did. And then, um, of course, his four tires, he could get a better run on the bottom than I could on two on the top. But I don't really know. If I didn't get sent into the corner, maybe it would have. Played a little different. It could have pinched Allen a little more, and he would have gotten loose and could have held him off. But still got a third, so I'll take it. It's a good points night for you tonight, man. It is. I needed that. Been struggling this season. I got you. So, uh, of all the the races coming up, where where do you see you finishing uh, the best at for it for your upcoming races? I don't really know. It's an odd schedule. <laughs> uh, I I don't really know. I've been off. Uh, these past couple of months, so who knows? I was excited for Pocono. It's one of the normal, like, normal-ish tracks, I guess we're going to. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, I have to look well, at the schedule to see what we're going to. But if we're going well, to a normal, actual Xfinity race, I might be fine. Well, we've got Darlington next week. How do you feel about that? Oh, I love Darlington. So I, I'll, I'll probably be up there with Alan and Cam. I would, I would hope. But yeah, I'm, I'm good at Darlington. I, I love Darlington. So we'll see. I got you, man. 
Well, good luck to you next week at Darlington. Let's see if your uh, luck you know, luck will hang out there and not get a uh, lady in black stripe there. So uh, good luck, man. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Well, that was a wonderful race here from Pocono Raceway. The tricky triangle that only has three corners. If you didn't know that, Carl, it only has three <laughs> corners, man. I'm shocked. I'm uh, shocked. I tell you. But uh, yeah, I mean, put on some great, exciting races, but uh, it's typical Pocono. It's a drafting. Uh, did not come down to a fuel run. Uh, we, you know, it's always one of those uh, exciting things that you kind of see here, uh, but did not happen. We got a few wrecks that kind of played into the hand of uh kind of a short little three lap shootout there a green white checker so uh got to see a lot of excitement got to see a car go fly through the air that he didn't want to see so <laughs> <laughs> yeah pre pretty pretty great race overall uh you know that long stretch uh, of green flag racing and um you know then the caution at the end really caused some drama um but uh you know the guy who uh, dominated all night uh able to come away with the win still Yes, he did. And Cameron Hearn did a great job. He started back in fifth and moved away, moved up to the first there and uh, the past his teammates there. Basically, all of them up there was his teammates. He had to get by and uh, was able to, to capture the win. I think he led the most laps all night long as well. So congratulations to Cameron Hearn from the Ghostfire Media crew. I am Adam. That is Carl. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network.